It's the routine activity that we'd never dream would become illegal, but after government shut down salons and barbers to control the spread of coronavirus, some hairdressers have decided to continue their trade. Well, one such person is Jane, changed her name, who says that she has no choice but to carry on working, and we can go to her live now at her home alongside one of her clients, Kate. Uh, obviously changed both the ladies' names and their voices to protect their identity. We turned them round. Who would ever have imagined that we would do a back-to-camera uh, interview about hairdressing? Uh, that's uh, the times that we live in right now. So, good morning, ladies. Thank you very morning. much indeed for, uh, for, for talking to us today. Good Jane. Morning. Hello. A uh, single mum of two from Staffordshire, full-time uh, carer to your eldest child who is disabled, although uh, not shielded. Um, when you yeah. first went into lockdown, when the country first went into lockdown, what were your thoughts? To be honest with you, I was quite frightened. Um, really to do with uh, the debt that I am in myself and how we would all survive. Um, you know, I'm in a lot of debt anyway, and it's very hard to keep on top of things with the bills, loans, credit cards. And I just thought to myself, you know, how am I going to get through this and keep us all above water, really? So, Jane, did you look into whether or not you could get a grant or a loan? Universal credit? Yes, um, I looked into the universal credit, but to be honest with you, it didn't touch what I was earning. And there's no way it would even cover any of hardly any of my bills or credit cards or loan payments. Um, and as for a grant, I, I just, you know, with loans, I don't want to take any more loans on and, and leave myself in even more debt. I don't want to have to have bailiffs at my door. Um, you know, I've been in this situation many years back and I just can't go through that again and I can't put myself and my children through that. So you decided that you were going to defy the rules. Was that an easy decision for you to make? Um, I, I thought long and hard about it and I'm very OCD with health and safety. So I really thought, you know, I'm going to take every safety precaution into hand and, and wrote down everything that I would have to do if I was to visit my clients in their homes and to be doing the hair and beauty work as well. Well, you've been, I mean, you've been busy, actually. There's been a lot of clients taking you up on your offer to go to work. I think you're seeing about 15 people at the moment. One of those is sat next to you, who's Kate. And Kate, you've been a regular uh, with Jane for about 15 years. So not only are you opening your door to her, but you're also opening your door to her and all the other clients she's been seeing. So what made you decide that this was OK? Well, well, my feeling was that I, first of all, I, she's also a friend of mine and I was aware of the situation she was in. I myself was feeling incredibly low, depressed, anxious. I was missing my family. I, I was in lockdown and we talked about it for quite a while and we decided to take absolutely the best precautions we could to make sure that the risks were as low as possible. When she came to the when she comes to the house, I open every single door so that she can simply walk into where she's going to be doing my hair. That uh, we were both wearing masks, uh, we're both wearing gloves, um, both wearing a, sort of covering plastic aprons. We showered both of us before and after. She uh, each time she came, but my feeling, my sense was that I was just sinking lower and lower. I. My tutoring work had really pretty much dried up. Um, I couldn't see my family. It, I, I just couldn't settle to do anything, even the things I tried to do, because I was so anxious. I was sort of sitting uh, lonely, but also just feeling really miserable. And so after two or three weeks of talking about it, we thought, well, look, we're going to take every chance we can to, to make it as safe as possible. But in the end, you know, I just... She came round and, and it was wonderful. I've, I've felt I've been putting on weight. I know it's trivial to say it. I've got these terrible grey roots coming through, which I know is a minor thing, you know, when people are dying of that. But I think mental health is in some ways as important as physical health. Um, and it made the most incredible difference the first couple of times after she came. I just felt so much myself. Um, you know, suddenly I, I was back and feeling a bit more normal. She's also a great friend and... 
Yeah. You know, I love the company. There, there, there will be people up and down the country who will be saying, I am lonely. My mental health has taken a big hit here. I have grey roots. My nails need doing. Yet I am still abiding by the rules. What gives you the right to potentially put... I mean, it's a little bit like safe sex. You know, you have no idea. You're, you're letting someone into your house, um, and, uh, and Jane, you're going into that house. Um, you've had five, uh, 15 yeah. other clients. Mm. You have no idea what their families have been doing, how careful their, the rest of their families have been. Um, there is a, every possibility that if it were to get into your environment, that's potentially 15 families, and you have a disabled child so aren't you being incredible both of you incredibly irresponsible well as for myself um i've made sure with the 15 clients i do have that they none of them have family at home um they're all people that live on their own and they are not even going out um i've made this a very strict condition of my own um and you can know, you, we are, trust them, we are though, really true. Can you trust them? And you are going out, so therefore they're being strict and staying in, but you're going in there having been with everyone else. Yes, but in the meantime, even though I'm going into their property, it's the same as a doctor going into their property. I'm fully um, equipped. All my, all my um, equipment is sterile and I wear the gloves, the mask, apron. Um, so, really, it is no different to me going into a hospital or doctors because everything I'm touching has been fully sterilised. I also think it's a freedom of choice thing that when you really, when somebody is in a really bad way, either financially or emotionally, um, that is something, there's also been a lot of conflicting advice from the government. One moment you're told that key workers should be allowed to go out and work if they absolutely need to. And I think in the case of my hairdresser, she felt she absolutely needed to. I wouldn't have ever forced her into doing it, but I, it made such a difference to both of us when she did return. I, I realised that people will say that, that we're irresponsible, but that's not how, how it feels. We have taken absolutely every precaution we can All right. to well, we've got, um... avoid the... We've got this morning um, uh, stylist, um, Michael Douglas, now, uh, who's, who's joining us. Um, morning, Michael. Morning. So, look, listening to, those, listening to those two people, um, they have, um, they've mutually agreed. All the clients have agreed. Um, mm -hmm. Jane uh, would, she could potentially lose her house if she didn't continue to work. And you've got Kate, whose mental health was suffering so severely, just human contact was what she needed. Mm -hmm. So, your thoughts? Well, the message is absolutely crystal clear from the hairdressing industry and the community, the National Hairdressing Federation, the Fellowship of British Hairdressing, we're all saying that this should not happen. I think it was um, Jane that said there, there's been conflicting advice, advice from uh, the government. I don't think there's been any conflicting advice from the government on what hair salons or hairdressers should be doing. They should not be doing this. I think the worry is that they're both anonymous, which means that they're not being transparent. And if they're not being transparent here, then where else are they not being transparent? We're at such a crucial time in lockdown uh, that if we were the only country to have a second spike and the only country to, um, sorry, the only country to go into a second lockdown and somehow the hairdressing community was contributing to that, I just think the responsibility is too big. And I'm not trivialising. I know... Um, Kate said something about that the, the vanity was trivial. I'm not trivialising vanity. It's extremely important. You know, I've put a lovely shirt on today because I wanted to feel much better about the way I felt when I looked at myself in a mirror. It's really important, but there are other ways I think you need to deal with um, with how you feel about the way you look uh, rather than asking a hairdresser to come round. And I think that Kate's probably a bigger part of the problem than Jane in many ways is that if you create a demand for it, one of the problems that, that hairdressers face is they have a personality trait where they want to say yes to people who ask to do their hair. And the more people that ask, the more likely they are to say yes. But, but she's, she, um, Jane said that she, she could lose her house here. She's got children. She's got a livelihood that she, she has to keep that roof over their heads. Um, so what, yeah. else is she, what else is she supposed to do? 
Well, I mean, it's a much bigger problem whether you're a hairdresser or not. And I think some serious advice, maybe Martin Lewis could help her out in some way, uh, or that website uh, that he's got there has got some fantastic advice on there. I don't understand why there isn't anybody helping um, Jane in another way in that instance. But going to work and putting herself at risk and other people at risk is a short-term strategy and it's not a good one. Michael, what about the hairdressing industry as a whole? Because obviously there's going to be a lot of people out of business in your line of work. Um, how mm. quickly can you recover from, from this? I mean, everybody's set of circumstances are different. So every salon runs a slightly different business model. And some of them sail very close to the wind. So they're making uh, money and spending it, you know, uh, so they're on a fine line. And other ones have some cash reserves in them. So every business is slightly different. The trick really is, is if you can ride it out until possibly early July, when it's, when it's stated that there's a strong possibility that they'll open, they've opened in Spain, Italy and Germany, there's a strong possibility they'll open then. If you can if you can wait till then, I think there will be, you know, a flood of people wanting to get their hair done. Now I realise there's going to be restrictions in salons because you're only allowed to have so many people in at any one time. There'll have to be space between the seats, so there might be a small price increase to start with, or there might be some kind of uh, promotion on where people can buy gift vouchers and things like that for future appointments. There'll be lots of different ideas floating around, but I know hairdressers are very um, entrepreneurial. Uh, and I, I would like to see that certainly by July, August time, they'll be open and they'll be thriving. And I think if Jane could just wait until then, and if Kate could find other solutions to help with her, uh, her, mental, her mental health issues, uh, I, I think, you know, we would celebrate that. So if you can stop doing it, I would. It's just a, such a crucial time. Jane, um, just you can get the final word here. Um, uh, what do you say to Michael? Um, I can understand everything that he's saying, but my point is as well, you know, thousands will be heading off to the beach today. Um, you know, it's OK for them to do that, whereas I'm only just trying to keep a roof above our heads. And that's all I'm trying to do. And I'm keeping all my clients and my children and myself safe by doing that. Um, thank you both. Thank, thank you. you very much indeed. Yeah, Please stay safe. It's a hell of a dilemma, uh, which we understand. Thank Michael, you. thank you for thank joining you. us as well. Thank you. Thank you.